record here. I want to continue our conversation about Kedusha holiness. I found a very beautiful piece in uh, a book by Revolbi called Mitzvah Hashkulois. Um, and the, the first thing he does is, he says this word or this commandment, this message, Kedoshim to you, that we should be holy, we find many, many times in the Torah. He, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 13 times at least, the Torah tells us, be Kaddush. Be, God wants us to be, to be Kaddush. So he says, let's look, at, let's look at some of these places. And um, there are two other phrases. There are two other phrases that are associated with it. The first one is, um, so here, here's the, here is the most basic commandment. It's actually a Pasha itself. Sorry, the, the Pasha is called Kadoshim to you. What happened there? The Pasha is called Kadoshim. And, oh gosh. Come on. Um, what happened? Something's happened here. Can you hear me? Yes. 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 I don't know what happened to my Safari. Okay, anyway. Uh, in Pasha's Kadoshim to you, it starts off by saying, God says to Moses, speak to B'nai Yisrael, speak to the Jewish people, and tell them, be holy. So on Shabbat, when we do the Birchus Amazon, where we bench, we, we say the grace after meals, um, we add something for Shabbat. And we say, Ritzei. Ritzei v'achilitzeinu Hashem elokeinu. And part of that we say, Ki yom ze gadol v'kadosh shvu l'fanecha. This day is great and holy before you. Lish bois boy velenuach boy to to rest on it to cease from working and to have menucha and to rest on it beava in love. So we see over here that this day is great and holy before you. We also see Hanukkah is coming up soon. Um, Hanukkah starts on the the tenth of December. Coming out there. Yeah. Um, yeah, Hanukkah probably starts on Wednesday night. No, starts on Thursday night. So in uh, Thursday night, the tenth. Um, so that is one, two, exactly three weeks from today. Oh. Three weeks from today. Get your Hanukkah candles. So we say a special, we add a special blessing into the davening, into the Bichas Muslim as well. And then we also say something very similar. We say, um, and God, and you made a name which is great and holy in your world. So says Revolbi, we see from here that there's this idea of godl. Godl means to be big, to be great. We see the idea of being big and great associated with holiness. What's the understanding? So the understanding is that there is a level of Kedusha, there's a level of knowing God. There's a level of perceiving God that comes after God, after greatness. And the idea is like this, is that we are physical. We are bound to space and time. And we need, in order to really relate 
to God, in order to perceive God, to know God, we need to release, be released from the bounds of this world. And that's really what Shabbat is. Shabbat is the day which it's, it's so almost anti um, uh, intuitive, counterintuitive, but really Shabbat is the day when we can have our greatest expansion of consciousness. Because during the week, we are busy in this world. Right? What is malacha? What is work? what is the, 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 that which we should not do on Shabbat, is really changing and manipulating this world. That's Shabbat. Shabbat is, don't, stop. Don't be involved. Don't change or manipulate the world. Have a day where you can step out of that, where you can, you know, this, this rocket was just launched into, into the atmos outer atmosphere. So, um, really, that's what Shabbat is. Shabbat is a day that we can take ourselves out of this need to um, change, manipulate the world, and have a day of expanded consciousness. That is called greatness. When we are in a situation of greatness, then we are able to perceive, interact, touch Hashem. That's where we meet Hashem. There's a place of Kedusha, this living in close proximity to God, which becomes so real when we have, you know, the, the Rambam speaks at length about prophecy and how the prophet needed to prepare himself. A, a prophet needed to prepare himself for prophecy. And he, he would go through different exercises and stages of consciousness until he reached this awareness of God speaking. And one of them, one of those stages is Simcha. He had to be in a state of joy. You can't meet God when you're depressed. You need to be in a state of joy. Depression is completely immersed in the, the bar, in that which binds us here. There's, there's no freedom there. Right? Depression is not free. It's, it's, it's uh, constrained, such a constraint. But when you feel freedom, with freedom comes happiness. With happiness comes greatness, expansion, and then Kedusha, this ability to, to perceive, to know, to connect, to feel, to have a spiritual sense of God. So that's the first kind of insight here, is that for Kedusha, in order to really come to the experience of God, to live in the presence of God, to be aware of God, one needs some greatness. One needs to be free. One needs to be expanded. One needs to be happy. Um, that's the first stage. Then there's something else. There's something that happens when that happens. And that is, um, here we're going to go to the beginning of Pasha's Yetzer, and this is in a few weeks' time, when, when, when Jacob, Yaakov, leaves the land of Israel to go to Adam Aram. So he goes, and on the way we know he has a dream. He has a dream of the ladder, Jacob's ladder. And he sees the ladder, he had a dream, a stairway, and uh, there were angels going up and down, and the Lord was standing beside him. The Lord was on top, and he said, I'm the Lord your God, and don't worry, um, you'll come back here, 
you'll be blessed. V'yikat Yaakov mishen nasoi, v'yoma achein yesh Hashem v'mokum hazeh v'ani lo yedati. Jacob woke up in his sleep and he said, surely the Lord is present in this place. And I did not know it. Which is an amazing thing. In his, as long as he was awake, he couldn't sense it. But when he went to sleep and his physical senses were dulled, he was able to perceive God. V'yira. And then he feared. V'yoyma manoira hamokum and he said, how awesome is this place? So after perceiving God, if one, how do you know if you've really perceived God? Is you will feel a tremendous, now in English we say fear. There's a fear. There's an awesomeness about it. Ki im base. This is the house of God and, and, and the gate to heaven. So if you, you know, people think that, you know, if you had a divine experience, it, it is incredible. But it's also Neira. It's, it's fearful. It's, it's it, you, you're completely out of your league. That's what Neira. Neira means this is all inspiring, meaning I am so small. I'm so insignificant. I, I, I feel my own limitation so much because what I'm interacting with, who I'm seeing, who I'm with, is so great. So that's a litmus test, says Ravaldi. That's a litmus, a litmus test about having a truly what we would call spiritual experience is that there is a part of it which is somewhat scary. There's a part of it which makes one or inspired, or inspired that you're in, you you are not so full with yourself anymore. You you come you you filled up. Your 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 attention is taken by this thing so much greater than you. It makes, a, I think, a very interesting point as to the implication of this. You know, the, the implication of this is that we very much live a, our spiritual lives in our thoughts. We're physical. Uh, our senses are very dominant. Our physical senses are very dominant. That's the reality we see around us. That's the reality we touch, we smell, we taste, we, we hear. And then we tell ourselves intellectually, we have this power to be abstract. We have this power to go beyond what I see and I, to, to comprehend something beyond what our net, our, what our, physical reality is confined to. And the truth is, the Swarna says very beautifully that this is part of being in the image of God. Is this ability to go beyond the physical. And that's abstract thought. The ability to say, well, well, when I look around this world and I think, what's the purpose of being here? I don't see it. I don't sense it. So I use my mind, and in my mind, I'm like, okay, I can accept, I understand. There's a God, he created this world, there's a purpose, he's going to reward us in the world to come. Those are all wonderful thoughts, and give us a lot of meaning and pleasure, of course. But it's not in the realm of reality. Reality is what we feel. You know, maybe I'm not sure about it, but I, I think our emotions, the fact that we can feel something means that it's part of our reality. If it's purely abstract thought, now, you have to be careful because even in abstract thought, there's definitely a feeling associated with it. But when something's real, it's, 
You feel it, you know it. So the message, the implication of going from what's called godless, god, godol, greatness, to kadusha, to this experience of God, to naira, to this awesome, this, this, this state of being in a, in a state of awe, that's real. That's a real interaction with the Almighty. That goes beyond our thinking. That's not a thought. That's not an, an abstract thought. That is a spiritual experience. There is something now, you know, the, the Rambam speaks in, in, in prophecy, people's, the, the body, you know, the only person to ever be able to speak to God face to face without losing their physical um, stature was Moses. Moses did not need to get into a prophetic state. He, wa he lived in a prophetic state. His physicality was not an obstacle to his spiritual state. But every other prophet, and this includes Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, all the other prophets that we have, fell into a prophetic dream, trance, because the physical body is an obstacle. The physical body is my reality is what I feel physically. And in order to have a spiritual experience, one needs to break out of that. And the way to break out of that is to nullify it. So the, the prophet would, would really, and, and when he would have prophecy, says the Rambam, his body would shake. He would have an extremely scary experience in the sense that he realized that in a way he was completely out of his league. Meaning that this wasn't a place where his physicality should really be. The physicality was like not able to contain it, this experience. And therefore it shook. Which tells us something amazing about Moses, about Moshe, that he was Ish Elohim. He was a godly person. Yeah, meaning that his body was able to sustain, was able to remain um, firm as Abraham, as Abraham, our Abraham wrote, right? He, 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 he had that courage to remain firm. And I, I would imagine after a while, he didn't even, it, his body went with it. He didn't have to. Um, he no longer feared so much. So that, says Ravolbi, is because, as the Rambam himself, the Rambam writes that we, um, we, think about God. But the truth is, when we say at the end of the Shema, we should get there soon, hopefully. At the end of the Shema, we say, Hashem Elokeichem Emet. The Lord your God is true. What is the truth? Says the Rambam, the truth is reality. That's what's real is what's true. And says the Rambam, that means that the only true reality the only true existence is that of God's. And all other existence, anything else, I mean, you know, just to stop and contemplate that for a second. The only true existence is that of God. And all other existence is just because God willed it into being. It is dependent on God wi willingly creating it, 
all other beings are created from the angels, from the highest angels to the lowest being on this earth. They are all created. They are all given existence by God. And when one comes into when one comes into contact with God in a real way, that becomes evident. You know, you, you thought you were self-sustaining. You thought that you were running on your own batteries. You thought that you were okay. And then you look around and you see there's a cord attached to you that's going into an outlet. And you realize that if that cord would be taken out, turned off, you would cease to exist. You would dissipate. You're suddenly filled with this, this awesomeness of how small we are, how dependent we are, and how great God is, and how much he gives us how how uh, that depend how much he is providing for our existence so the message is very simple but i think very profound and that is that in order to be kadosh in order to be holy we need to approach God. We need to rise up from pettiness, the pettiness of this world. We need some expansion of experience and consciousness. And once we find God, we, don't, we will experience a, a sense of awe, almost a frightening experience of awe until we get used to that. And then I guess they're just levels upon levels upon levels of spiritual development. So when we speak about in the Shema, you, you, you should be holy to God. You will be holy to God. That is what we are speaking about. It, it's a very high level of living with God. And then, of course, it means being like God in this world, in the way that we live. So that's the the message today. I um, hope that's interesting. Do you have any uh, any uh, questions, thoughts? I, mm -hmm. Sorry. Carry on, Barry. Carry on. No, no, this is very powerful. Very powerful. Very powerful. I might. May I say something that is probably very stupid? Go ahead. Um, and I don't want you to forgive me if I've really got it wrong. But where did God emanate from? Who, how did we get to worship God? Who, who started it? Where, where was God? Where, where did he, he, she come where from? Where does God come from? So we say, and that's not a stupid question at all, actually. Very good, very good. And the, the, the reason why we ask the question is because we live in a created world. So everything that we experience is created. It had a source. So, so was God created? No. So we say in, a, we say in a Yigdal, Yigdal lelokim chai v'yishtapach. So we say, v'ein... 
No. Um, let me find it, please. Sorry. Who was the first to acknowledge God? Well, God spoke to Adam, so he knew him. But yeah. then it seems that people forgot about him, and then Abraham discovered him again. But we say in the Yigdal like this. Um, Kado Kadmon l'chol davar, Hashem ivra, Rishon vein Rishi is the rain. Okay, what do those words mean? Kadom l'chol davar, God was before anything else, Hashem nivra, which was created. Rishon, he is the first being. The ain Rishis, the Rishi say. There is no beginning to his beginningness. Let's Meaning see. that God always existed. There is no time for God. God is that being which is the... We can't comprehend it because we are created. But as a creator, he always was. And the reason why we ask the question is because everything in our world is created. And we are created. That's the only thing we know. So we assume that God is also created, but he's not. He is the creator. Um, and as such... Um, he had no beginning. There is no beginning for God. Thank you. Yeah, very good. Um, okay. Fine. Everyone, okay. have a good Shabbos. Thank, Thank you. you. You too. Okay. Thank you very much. Matt. Thank good you. Night. Bye. 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 Bye.